Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got a Huawei P30 Lite. To be honest, I never had a chance to test the P20 Lite. Um, so the P30 Lite I'm really looking forward to purely because I really look like good value for money and this is essentially it. This phone is very good value for money. So on the back we've got the LED flash fingerprint sensor triple lens setup. Then we've got the power volume up, volume down on the right hand side. We've got the SIM tray with no memory cards um, expansion on the top. Headphone jack type C connector and a one bottom firing speaker on the bottom. Then on the top of 6.15 inch display we've got the front facing camera and an earpiece. The front facing camera does have 24 megapixels with an f-stop of 2.0. Unfortunately though um, it's got a fixed focus so there's no autofocus which means that sometimes some pictures might look odd when taken with a front facing camera. Actually, depending on the market, you might get a 32 or 24 megapixel um, camera. On the British market, I believe we have a 32 megapixel shooter. So let's have a look. In terms of the actual interface design, uh, the, the actual, sorry, operating system, we've got Android 9 out of the box with the security patch from March 2019. So that's very up to date. However, it is a Huawei, it's not a one, uh, Android One handset, which means that that might be it. Now, because it's an Android 9 device, obviously, if you like to, you can use gestures, gestures um, to navigate through the phone, or you can use the home back and recent button. Then we've got the simple mode, if you're thinking about buying the phone for a senior member of your family or for a younger sibling. Then we've got a feature advisor which kind of tells us everything about the phone itself and the features when we go through them. In terms of smart assistance, we've got high touch which allows you to basically point the phone at something and it tells you the price and helps you buy that item. Then if you'd like to, you can use one handed mode by moving your finger across the screen and it lowers the size of the screen. Um, then what we've got in here, motion control, so standard features where if you flip the phone you mute it and so on so on. You, when you lift it, it automatically answers the, um, the, the, the call you are getting through. In terms of security, we've got the passcode lock, we've got the pattern lock, we've got the fingerprint sensor on the back and we've got a really fast face unlock as well. It's a proper face unlock, not not like, you know, the the smart unlock or anything like that, which is in standard Google handsets. It's really fast facial recognition, maybe not as accurate or safe as the Apple system, but it does its job pretty well. Then you've got digital balance, which let, lets you know how much time you're spending on um, certain apps inside the phone. Storage wise, 128 gigabytes of data. Uh, of internal storage. In terms of the battery, you've got a 3340 mAh battery with a fast charging that supports 18 watts. So half an hour will give you around 30% to 70, uh, 60 to um, 70%. The battery life is actually pretty decent, I have to admit. Um, it does kind of, I don't know if it's the LCD panel that doesn't drain that much, even though it's AMOLED panels that usually don't take that much power or what it is, or it's the Kirin 710 processor CPU, but the battery life is actually pretty decent. Um, obviously, they could have gone with the 4000 milliampere hour units, but as I've said, in terms of the battery life, you're looking at around two days easily, and that's with Spotify around an hour, around an hour of YouTube or Netflix, and obviously browsing social media and stuff like that. So the battery, I have to admit, is really good. What's also interesting is that in terms of GPS tracking, you've got assisted GPS, a normal GPS and a GLONASS as well, plus Baidu system. So you've got like a triple GPS um, system, which also is quite popular in the Xiaomi devices. And that's pretty much it. So it does look like a bog standard handset, but everything runs just fine, like fluid, fast and so on. It's a really good experience i have to admit now i don't know the official pricing for the handset yet i think it's going to be around 220 pounds 250 i will 
update that in the video descriptions once once I know the pricing but it is shaping up as a really good competition for Xperia 10 or the Samsung A50 which I've also managed to get my hands on so I'll get the review and A40 as well um, out as soon as possible in terms of camera and pictures you do get this triple lens camera setup obviously I did mention that uh, I, I do have to mention that the picture samples will be at the end of the video but you've got a 48 megapixel unit with f-stop 1.0 which is a wide angle sensor we've got a phase, det uh, phase detection out of focus then we've got an 8 megapixel camera which is ultra wide and on the bottom the last unit i've showed you at the beginning of the video is a 2 megapixel camera which is purely used for sensing depth for portrait pictures in terms of quality i have to admit that the pictures taken with a huawei are actually pretty decent they might not be p30 or p30 pro standard but in my opinion the camera setup is really good uh, but i'll let you judge it if you'd like to you can record slow-mo in up to 480 frames per second in terms of video recording you can record in 4k at 30 frames per second uh, sorry uh, 1080p if you use the standard app or if you download open camera you can force 4k the kirin processor does support 4k and so yeah pretty much impressed with the device itself um, the audio quality we're going to test in a second as well i feel like it could have been louder it's not as loud as i wanted it to be so yeah have a listen Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the phone itself. If you've got any questions, drop me in the comments. Um, yeah, thanks for watching another episode of Quick Experts Reviews and I'll speak to you soon guys. Bye!